My guest today is a certified yogi, a dietitian, and a published author. Also, she's an expecting new mom, so we're trying to get her in bed before nine. Please welcome Miss Liz. Thanks, Emily. Yeah, it's great to see you again. I wanted to ask you, for someone who's a little apprehensive about trying yoga for the first time, because I've actually had people come to me and tell me that um, they're not interested in doing <laughs> yoga, no matter you know how much they see on social media, but mm -hmm. for that person, how would you convince them, in a couple of words, to try yoga? Yoga is, for me, and for a lot of people, it's more than just the physical practice. So we have mind, body, spirit connection, and not a lot of people know about this. They just think that yoga is stretching, or they might be intimidated to go to a class um, if they've never done it before, but I think there's so many benefits of yoga that we can tap into that I haven't even tapped into. So you've been practicing yoga for well over a decade now. What would you say is the greatest change that you've seen either in your mind or your body that came from the benefits of doing yoga? Some of the main ones that I've experienced is present moment awareness. So being okay in the present moment and enjoying life as it happens to me versus thinking about like what happened in the past or like what's going to happen in the future. I think yoga really grounds and makes us present in like every, everything that we do. The main question I have for you, and this, this is a question that, you know, if, if nobody learns anything from this episode, then this is the one takeaway that I hope they do learn a lot from, but what's the biggest mistake that you see from people when they are dieting? One of the biggest mistakes is giving up too early, trying to seek immediate results. Like just like in life or like with anything that you're starting, if you like, we're all creatures of like instant gratification, right? Like it's, if you do one thing, you're like, oh my God, like I want the result to be either today or tomorrow. And like, that's how we are. But I think with dieting or just like, starting anything new we need to give our bodies the time to adapt and also to basically go into this routine they say it takes like 21 days to break a habit a lot of people aren't you know that patient and i think that's one of the biggest mistakes is get off the bandwagon of whatever they're doing and just being like oh this doesn't work in your opinion is there an ideal diet or like a general diet that people should follow? I am biased because I'm also vegan, so I'm plant-based. I don't eat any dairy products, animal products, anything like that, and I've been like that. I'm a little bit biased, but I would say the general healthy diet is to, number one, be moderate. <laughs> a lot of people either eat too much or not eat enough, and they think that one way or the other is better. Eating lots of fruits and vegetables, eating the rainbow. I don't know if you've heard of that before, but just eating like different colors that you see in the rainbow. And yeah, just being mindful when you're eating. So not watching TV, not scrolling Instagram, um, not having really intense conversations. 100%. That's something that I've been trying to integrate into my lifestyle this year. So what I do is I just eat with my cats <laughs> and the way that I now frame it in my head is, you know, whatever food that I'm eating, someone else, you know, worked in the field or like an animal, you know, died <laughs> to be like on my plate. So I have to respect it. <laughs> that's kind of how that's my approach to mindful eating. Now, when you said um, your diet is mostly plant based, trust me, I have tried this and I, I still skewed towards like a very vegetarian and plant-based diet but um the reason that i haven't been able to get off of meat is because my doctor told me that i get iron deficient very easily and that i do have to have like lean meat and some other like omega-3 uh from salmon and things like that for people like myself who i guess like just i think i'm just naturally you know deficient on some of these minerals and nutrients what what are your thoughts on that 
I would say that there's a plant-based version of anything that you're talking about. So for example, iron, there's spirulina is a great source of iron. So a lot of people take um, spirulina tablets or um, dark green leafy vegetables are also great sources. You can take a vitamin um, and really just monitor um, your levels. For example, vitamin B12 is one a lot of people say that if you don't eat animals or animal products, you can't get enough of. But I feel like nutritional yeast, for example, like right now we can add anything to our diets um, with vitamins, minerals, and, th and supplements like that. Okay, so we've been talking about foods that we do eat and supplements that we do want to consume and put into our bodies. Are there maybe like your top three things that you absolutely will not let anywhere near your body. I would never drink a regular soda. That's one of my main things. It's so sugary. Um, I just don't see, I mean, I see why people drink it, but it, like, it would just make me go into a coma like right away if I drink it. So that would be the first one. Um, the second one, um, anything at the state fair, I would say, like anything fried. And then the third thing, I would eat mostly anything that's vegan. I guess the third thing would be like any kind of meat, any kind of dairy for me. Um, before I get to my final question, in your opinion, what are some of the most beneficial poses, asanas, for people who are very sedentary? Some beneficial yoga poses. I would say just starting with the sun salutation A. A sun salutation A is usually a warm up for practice. Um, and we start in Tadasana, which is standing with hands by your side or in prayer. Um, and then inhaling as we lift our arms up, exhaling as we fold to the floor in a forward fold. Yeah, sun salutation A, but also um, some strength poses. So like plank, I would warm up the wrists really well before doing that. Um, some hip stretches like lizard um, and also, oh, back bends, like some gentle back bends. So cobra, low cobra, um, things like that. That'll help with the posture if you've been sitting all day. I would say sun salutation A composes of most of the things that we do in yoga. So if you don't have or time for a full yoga practice, you're already doing the full sequence when you're doing Sunday. Well, um, this is really fun chatting with you. Super insightful, Liz. And the last question that I always like to ask to kind of, you know, wrap the little conversation into a bow is what is something that you've been doing that has really benefited your own mental health and wellness. And the last guest that we had, um, he said that for him, it's traveling because when he's traveling and going outdoors, like actually physically touching leaves can, can sort of act like an antidepressant. So that really blew my mind and I wanted to know what was yours. Yeah, if you had asked me this question before I was pregnant, I would say probably the same thing because I love traveling and my husband and I like traveled all over the place for the past 10 years since we've been together. But as soon as I got pregnant, my body was just like, stay still and just be. And so really this past week was in like, for my whole pregnancy is just listening to my body. Oh, I was talking to you about my hypotension, <laughs> so my low blood pressure, um, and it's been especially worse um, these past couple of weeks, so I've been really just careful about drinking enough water, getting enough electrolytes, not doing too much, because if my heart rate goes up too much, then I start to feel dizzy and like lightheaded, um, and I have to like sit down for like a long time. So um, really just listening to my body and what it needs at the moment and connecting that. I'm not really thinking, oh my gosh, like I need to get in a yoga practice or I need to do this for my body because 
everyone's different. Every day is different and mm -hmm. everyone goes through cycles and waves. And right now my cycle and wave is just listening and being and really what's best for myself and my baby. It is so hard to be a girl, am I right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Carry the babies. We have to like do our hair and, and makeup and look good. And nowadays, like we're expected to hold jobs and stuff. It is crazy. Well, congratulations to you and Max and like props on becoming a new mom. Like it is such a gift. Oh, thank you so much, Emily.